All right, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us this evening uh, on the occasion of Grace Wood's exhibition. There is no, oh God, I've lost the title. No New Waves. No New Waves, Only Ocean. <laughs> uh, we've got Jack Willett here and Grace Wood, uh, and they're going to be discussing the exhibition. Before we get started, I'd just like to go through some housekeeping. Uh, this conversation is being recorded, so if you don't want your image to be recorded, uh, there's an icon in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, and uh, you can make your selection there. Uh, the conversation is anticipated to go for about 20 to 30 minutes, uh, with 10 minutes question time at the end. I'd also like to acknowledge that we're meeting today on the traditional land of the Wandering people of the Kulin Nation. And I'd like to pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. To introduce Grace Wood, uh, Grace is a Melbourne based artist. She graduated from the Victorian College of the Arts in 2014 and has since exhibited extensively uh, in Australia at public, private, and non profit spaces. Jack Willett here is the curator at the Centre for Contemporary Photography. Uh, prior to this role, Jack was the director at Station Gallery. Uh, Jack also maintains an independent curatorial practice and writing practice. Uh, I now open the floor to this discussion. Thanks, Adam. Hello. Hi, everyone in the digital round. Hi, Craig. Hello. <laughs> Well, I guess the big thing for me was coming to it with this title and then the thing that first came to my mind was like that idea of a sea of images and I was trying to work out where that saying came from. Like, you know, they talk about like a sea of things and a sea is big because it's so en masse, so there's a mass of something. And then that made me think back to like kind of, I guess all of your work was a, a sea of images or, a, you know, lots of different groupings and I guess a thing that always I've been so curious about is how you actually come to the images and how they're collated. Like, I know I'm like a hoarder of images digitally of, you know, say it's artists or whatever, and they go on to very specific titles or, but do you have like folders that force their way into certain realms or does it change with each body of work? It definitely changes with each body of work. Um... And I have, I do have folders. Yeah, I was so curious. <laughs> I have hard drives and hard drives. Yeah. Um, and partly because I'm scared I'll one day get sued, or partly because I don't want to forget what I've used, I keep every image yeah. that I have in the source. Um, like sometimes I'll Google, uh, also like hard copy things. Like I mm. have, I have a camera that I take around and take photos of real object like yeah. real life <laughs> and then I source images from digital things as well and also out of books I really have enjoyed recently photographing books um, and not being able to visit galleries as well because I really liked going to like large institutions and then photographing these old works mm -hmm. in the way that then the text just become digital images and not yeah. being able to do that and then going to these books where there are these flattened versions mm -hmm. of these and then, but still photographing, not scanning. And then, yeah, yeah, photographing, so then it becomes changed life again. Mm. I really enjoy that and the changing. Or like finding something and then printing out and scanning it two or three times. And then so it's layering as well, isn't it? It's like, layering yeah. on layering. Mm. <laughs> but that brings me another point. I was curious, like, when looking at something, say like a, a large artwork when you go into an institution or you know, for images to find details, are you just, is your eye attracted to, you know, how do you find the elements you're looking for? Like, because, you know, same looking at something like a large paint, but then to completely just grasp onto something, or it's like with this work, that the hands were these kind of copying, like continuous elements. So is it something that you're looking for, photos of hands, or you found them within larger context somehow? Yeah, I think definitely, I. If I would, were to go through the photos I've taken of like the last 10 years or something in galleries, it's probably, there's a lot of hands in there. It's something that I find really interesting, but mm. I definitely have folders. I mean, I really like Patrick Pound's practice, mm. that collecting. I'm definitely not as um, precise as him, like yeah. with the fault, like the way that he organizes it, but um, I definitely have things like that mm. dependent on what the work is. But, I kind of... Do the photos have titles? Like, 
Yeah. <laughs> too, sorry, now I'm getting too personal. Just literally cans. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, or like the name of artist or colour. Like, yeah. I'm definitely always very, uh, I'll go for a colour. I used, to, like, when I was studying, I used to print these huge um, in the colour dark room. Mm. I did, used to be way more traditional. Um, and I just printed these colours, like colour fields, and I was really interested in the colours that you can get from photographic paper. Mm. Um, and like works that I used to make, I would use these big things of colour and then put other images onto them. Yeah. Um, like by sticking them on or sewing them on. Yeah. Um, and then I kind of uh, wanted to flatten them, so I got into doing that and then photographing it, and then I got into doing collaging and then photographing, and now it's yeah. much more flat on the screen. Yeah, so it's much more computer based now than it was from the what the VCA days. Of yeah, it definitely fluctuates, but with COVID, um, yeah, like these now. ones definitely yeah. very computer based. I, I did some stuff in my studio this year of finding old images and like painting on them and then photographing. Oh, yeah. Which I liked doing. Um, and I do definitely sometimes paint or draw and then photograph that and put it into the works. Yeah. Um, like I did this work for. Mars Gallery, like this outdoor, oh, yes, yeah. the big, mm. the big guy, um, and I found this like old postcard, um, and someone had written on it like, "Will you come to, uh, like, to Chapel Street?" Mm. <laughs> uh, and I really liked that, and then so I blew up the text of this, and then like painted over it, and yeah. then um, like photographed it and blew it up. Oh, yeah, no, I've not seen photos, I've seen images of it, but it does, yeah. yeah it's not within 25 kilometers, so yeah, don't blame cool. anyone on this side for not having seen it yet. Yeah. <laughs> God, it's funny because thinking again of these folds and like I was thinking of the Australian author, um, Gerald Mermaid, he wrote this great book, The Plains, but he's really well known for this kind of three archives he has, and there was one called the Chronological Archive, and it's where he kind of puts all these texts and ideas, but he had titles like objects that wink at me and hoaxes how I love them and I take part in a public farce. And it really it got me thinking about how we collate images under these kind of larger titles. But then I realised like that's then the artwork in a way. It's like, you know, providing a title but then these images. So in a way, I guess your artworks kind of feel like there are a number of these folders with different literal titles of hands, and then they become the larger kind of conceptual piece, I guess, that we've seen behind us in a way. It's, yeah. And then it's funny because you're talking about the painting, and that was another one I was really curious about because, for one thing, I guess, with photography, it's, you know, it's a medium we considered, well, first and foremost, I guess, in a lot of ways to be wall based and like, but I see in your photos, I always think of painterly gestures and sculpture because your works embrace those gestures so much, especially here, or even like to the still life point, there's quite a, you know, a historic painterly subject matter. Well, I think I just feel impotent and we all know photography is the bastard medium, <laughs> as they say, <laughs> and painting is the preferred medium. Maybe I yeah. just wanted to be a painter, but I can't. Yeah. <laughs> um, I definitely um, like thinking about and talking about art history mm. uh, as an institution. And yeah. so the, the institution of white male painters is mm. something that I definitely keep coming back to and looking at. Mm. And these works, which are obviously beautiful and amazing and, you know, cornerstones of art as we know it, yeah. but also very privileged. Yeah, it's a singular narrative that's not telling the other stories. Yeah. yeah, and I really like the idea of co digging those images and telling a different story with them. And then do you think by this zooming in or this severe cropping of that, you're kind of removing them whilst including them in a way? Yeah, I think definitely. Um, and removing them and, you know, not naming them or mentioning them and you know if you know and if you don't know that's cool and like maybe that's better as well yeah because it's like a discovery like you know? I, yeah i would like it, you know you to look at that and not know that it's a little bit of a minute painting and just mm. think that all of it like that's nice colors <laughs> but then like, i guess it's fun. fascinating like because paintings come into that digital realm because of those technologies and yeah to quote 
all men, I guess, was like Wade Gardner and the like, who are talking about this painterly practice, but through a photographic printing practice, which I guess is similar, but then you to kind of replicate that with gestures is a bit that I love. And I guess I'm grateful that the printing quality keeps getting better and better. Have you noticed a change in that since, you know, while you've been producing this kind of works, like that opportunity for a higher detail or that, to give that materiality more to the digital? Yeah, definitely. And it's, it's really good to have those options as well. I mean, I didn't even, like, my prints for this is on wallpaper. Mm. <laughs> and uh, even, like, from the last works that I made to now, the quality um, mm. is better and it's so, so much easier. And with the, the poor image and those low pixelated mm. images, then to be able to use them and mm. blow them up in this way mm. is really exciting. And again, that distorts them further. The other than low quality, it's kind of removing that originality of that image, image in a way. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it becomes a totally new image, right? Mm. Like, I mean, I remember this thing that Siri Hayes did on her Instagram yeah. with like the images while they were loading, mm. like taking the photos, and it became these like color field images. Mm. Like, it wasn't, you know, it was someone else's image. It's kind of like, Richard Prince for the poor man. Instead yeah, yeah. of like stealing the images, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's still like the blurred out mm -hmm. version of the images. I really liked that. That's really yeah. nice. Because like that's that extreme example of you worrying about the, the lawman coming to you. I mean, I think you know, Prince has probably done the groundwork for you if you ever need to look back at yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. But also you talk about- He's got the money though. Indeed. <laughs> oh, yeah, Adam, you know, let's that, raise the price. <laughs> maybe, but, but like, it's funny thinking about you then saying the idea of a monochrome and colour but through this printing but then looking at these works that's the monochrome is very much there in a way and it always has been I mean I remember looking at earlier works where um, you showed a bus I believe and had that terrific kind of green lines through it there's another body of work that had a yellow like a yellow was quite prominent this the colour like does that stem from those initial years of BCA when you were talking about that in the dark room and then like, so obviously we look at the verso of this work, it's the blue, and then the verso of the green is actually the image. And where did those, that kind of monochrome come into play? Yeah, well, I've always been really interested in also, you know, um, like Rocco or all those you yeah. know, earlier painters um, and the way that it can be immersive. And mm. I think photography is, um, doesn't often act like that, traditional photography. Um, yeah. Obviously, you know, there's, Artists that are doing that now. And um, I remember seeing like Liz Tachine's mm. green works that are just these massive um, green photographs and finding that like that was mm. game changer and then wanting to, yeah, wow. to use things like that and turn photographs into uh, these monolith monolithic like yeah. better word. But also I saw the the Monet paintings um, on the art island in uh, Japan. Oh, is that in the Tyrell? Is that, yeah. yeah, wow, yeah. Um, and they were like the last one we made before he died and he talked about the idea of like these grand decorations or that instead of art being like, it, it would just have to look nice basically. You know, he was going blind and he couldn't make it yeah. the way he wanted, he just wanted to make these, these grand decorations. Like the way he said it. And so I always liked the idea of grand decorations and just making Mm. things that are like that. It's like a colour field a monochrome can does have that decorative element, I yeah. guess, of it. And as well, I mean like this amazing I know I like that that recto verso kind of thing with always thinking about the back, which I guess brings me another point that I've always liked about your work that you know, like we were saying earlier, photography, I mean you always think photography pinned or framed and it's on a wall that's bound to the wall in a lot of ways. And I know that everyone has been changing quite a bit, especially in the since postmodernism and so forth. But um, with your works there, funnily again, like referencing the sculpture, but now they really are sculpture. Like you couldn't just call, talk to these as photographic works. They're very much that anthropomorphic, we're in front of it, we're engaging with it, we have to negotiate it and so forth. So what, the desire for that is that kind of to change the viewer's perception and to make this when you, you know, you know, I never know if I should say collage. Is that is that a comfortable yeah. term? Yeah. Um, 
but then that's a collage in space too. It's like from, especially the gallery like one, I mean, you've got different perspectives and the way you rise up through the stairs or looking from a certain angle. Is it yeah, kind of I think all those things? Yeah, it's another um, cut and paste really and yeah. the way that you move and things get cut, like mm. the process of cutting it. Um, I thought like since I was at school, my final works, I had them on a wall, but then I had all these perspex um, things hanging in front of them. And as you would walk past, they would cut bits of the images. Yeah. You know, like how Bola Sorry used to use the dots, yeah. um, like photographs, and then you would put a blob or like a dot of color. Mm. I like the idea of bringing those into a 3D. Yeah. Or like, you know how Rauschenberg would like get a plate and like put it on his work or, yeah. I like the idea of bringing it into the 3D and making it change. Mm. So, but hiding like, and revealing, like at the same yeah. time. And the way that you see around through, like with the bus work yeah. that had the pole and then the image. Mm. If you were close, you would only see the image and mm. nothing else. And if you were far, you would. Yeah, I think the way that relationships change with mm. work as you walk in space, it's not my work, but work in general, yeah. is one of the most exciting things about art for me. And mm. the relationship between images and different people's work, like curatorial practices that fit old against new and yeah. have lots of different like style of practice within mm. one show, I've always found really interesting. And I'd like to mm. think that I can kind of do that a little bit within the work and yeah. then within the show. Yeah, I must say, like, with my new role at CCP, it's so fascinating because it, it really does force you to think about, you know, that singular kind of idea of lens-based media, but then extrapolating it, and it does become, you know, sculptural or becomes more immersive with wallpaper or the inclusion of other elements that then make the photo kind of react or change in certain ways, or, and then, of course, video works as well, how they're displayed, like, you know, I guess another thing now is, presenting screens as sculptural elements so you engage with them not just as image but as objects as well, mm -hmm. which is really exciting. I mean, there was another element um, reading your press release saying that, um, <laughs> well, whoever wrote it, is it that your handiwork? No? Yes, it is. Yes, it's amazing. But the tethering, and I love that idea of tethering, and then thinking about this with the pearls and with the rope, and then contained in this with the, the chain and, yeah and like is that is it gentle control or is it kind of or a way of forcing like binding relationships like especially say with this work or is it kind of just a bit more playful yeah do you think so <laughs> no see that's the thing because I think be because of the material oh, you've chosen has made it it's gentler, like, you know, you don't think of like, you know, when you Google tether and stuff, you know, the leash on the dog, but then of course this is true for reference to the digital age and tethering to the, you know, Wi-Fi. It's like Yeah, exactly. But like, I just, I was really curious about that because again, I think that kind of references your work on a whole of that idea of collaging and together. It's like, how much do you find and how, or how open, and I think we've seen that a lot of your works that some of them are gentle on that collaging element, but then also, again, return to painting like that, that great, like, brown, that basic idea of painting of, like, you know, this kind of layering of things, but this work it does have this amazing sense of depth, which is another tethering in the way for me, I don't know. Yeah, I really, I really like the idea of the, the double, you know, the words that can mean different things, and, mm. I felt, I think we all felt tethered and yeah. stuck yeah. this year um, and contained and, you know, forced into, you know, our spaces and the work definitely also took that yeah. direction and um, I think they do that in general. But yeah, I wanted to, to make things feel a little bit uncomfortable and I mean, it's unnatural as well, but then it's got these elements of yeah. That's kind of nice, isn't it? Like aesthetics pushed to the extreme sometimes, I think, affords a, 
a new discussion in a way. I think we've all get so up here, like we're done with kitchen and all these kind of ideas. But I'm um, not done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I just think it comes to mind. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, but yeah, I think it's really fascinating that that idea of tethering that was really sort of think about it. I just think it's good to be able to push things together. Mm. Um, I mean, yeah, like I, I've said in this work, it's got these old, like, antique things that were found a few thousand years ago mm. mixed with these contemporary items that were, you know, this pottery is by mm. another artist from last year. Like, what's the difference between that and that, you know? And so, like, what was this again? This was a, a Germanic, one of the first sculptures, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. like this artifact that was discovered and it was believed to be a woman, and then they said it was actually a man, it's like the first male Venus. Yeah. Is that what kind of made you want to show this, I'm gathering the crutch area there to kind of comment on that? Yeah, well, I got really obsessed with um, Dali's Venus, yeah. like that sculpture mm -hmm. um, with the, the drawers and the way that then it's this classical female figure going back to, you know, using art history mm -hmm. and then the way the female figure has been commodified and, the way he just is like, yeah, I'm going to quantify it way more. I'm just going to make it into a chest with drawers. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, just got, I just really liked that. And then so I was looking at different iterations of that and mm -hmm. the history of the Venus. I mean, mm -hmm. you're never going to get a complete history of it. Yeah, of course. I mean, my work is very much like these fake personal histories that are my prerogative. And, um, yeah, I've heard like mythologies comes up a lot through like your practice over all the years. I mean, I've read a lot of times when people discuss your work that it's about these mythologies and it's like, I guess, and then discussing what's truth and what's, uh, you know, you compose the narrative of life. And again, I guess that comes back to colour, just like, because it's like, you know, all to talk with. I but even like 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 colour, even you know. photographs today and the way, you know. Yeah, what's that real, yeah. The photograph is never real anymore. Mm. Like, you know, even the most um, documentary photographs aren't real and, um, you know, this year with the disinformation thing around mm. COVID and the US election and yeah. uh, how we get our information and, um, you know, reality is not reality anymore and so there's probably not even that much difference between mm. this and, you know, any other image. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's, did you feel then in this age since, you know, what's truth and all these more ideas that you had more of a right to keep going in that direction, but you obviously at the start a bit timid with the, you know, appropriation. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah definitely. Now that it's like a mainstream <laughs> media, like you feel kind of open to be able to just do what you want. Peter's still getting me some, yeah, like, yeah. you know, if she, yeah, her writing's emboldened me. Probably. Yeah, well, thanks for that for a lot of people. Yeah. Are there any points that you have come up with that I've got just kept talking and talking? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think. How, how are we going for time? Uh, yeah, probably a couple more minutes and then we can open up to questions. Or we could open up to questions now. You guys have probably covered what you... I'm happy with Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, that, that, yeah. let's start that and I can look over notes and see if anything <laughs> just feels blank. Yeah, so uh, if anyone wants to ask any questions, they just need to unmute uh, their speaker and yeah, we'll be go from there. Oh, hi, Grace. Is it, uh, my name's Caroline. Uh, how far ahead do you plan what you're doing in terms of your work? Um, it's, it's very... Uh, I'll start with like an idea or like a text or a single image and then it will grow from there and become a hundred images and a thousand images and then I'll pair it back and try and edit and edit uh, like for these works, because in COVID I was stuck at home, um, it was all very planned ahead of time for the install, so I had to know what this was going to look like 
without seeing the space, which was a real challenge. Um, I guess because of the installation of, of a lot of my work, um, you know, like it exists in the space in these 3D ways, there is a bit of planning involved. Um, but I do like to leave some things to chance. Um, like I'll have the images, but then see how they work in the space. I really like to play with, um, like I was saying, the way you walk through the space yeah. and have things move around. So knowing that the work might be here, I had to come in and I don't know, I had to walk around it and see is there enough room between here and here or... You know, so those physical considerations have to come into it too, not yeah. just the conceptual answers. There's so many things you can't do until you but um, it's definitely quite intuitive in terms of the way that the things are constructed. Um, it's just like a building up and then uh, trying to edit. Thanks, Grace. Uh, is there any other questions for Grace or prompts or for Jack to kind of open up some conversation? Hi, Grace. Hi, Jack. Uh, my name's Thea. Um, I just had a question about um, your relationship with fashion because I, I see, I've seen that you regularly used um, fashion images um, throughout your practice. And I was wondering if it was like, you know, they're often quite beautiful, but then sometimes they seem ironic. So I was just wondering what your relationship is. If it, if, is it aspirational or is it inspirational or is it meant to be ironic or, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a hard one to pin down. Um, it's definitely inspirational and aspirational. <laughs> um, I actually used to work uh, in design fashion like as a retail um, consultant at Maya. <laughs> I used to, um, you know, surround myself with these really fancy thousand dollar, you know, clothing items. Um, I've been obsessed with fashion for a really long time, but I also think that the relationship between fashion and art, um, you know, is really, you know, they're tethered. Yeah. Well, now it's, I mean, it's becoming singular in a lot of ways. I mean, and even seeing arts have their own fashion life. Yeah, like it's such a crossover. Um, and yeah, like this, uh, this is a, it's Yeezy, um, Kanye West, his fashion line. Um, and you know, that, so he, he tries to do everything too. And I think there's definitely a crossover between that and then my work, maybe trying to do everything too. But I also do just find fashion really beautiful and a form of art. And I'm into the democratization of, um, you know, these different practices. And I think that they can all be put on path. Yeah, well, it's like you were saying earlier, I mean, about enjoying those exhibitions that have, you know, all these different types from different years and different meetings. So they're the most enjoyable ones, I think. That's what we're seeing with this kind of crossover of different, you know, artistic outputs. And it's funny, when I look at this, like, with the white, and you do think of the Venus in a way, too. Like, in a lot of the works, and even the, the reverse of that work, too. Yeah, and I mean, fashion does that. Exactly. Right? Well, that's what the, you know, the mannequin's kind of starting, I guess, that marvel object in a way. Yeah, and I definitely have been interested in materiality um, for a long time and, you know, making fabric works and the way that um, uh, materials can be altered and repurposed. And so I like the idea of soft things like fabric or um, things that are, you know, ceramic or whatever, then becoming images, which are pixels, and the differences between thread and noise, camera noise, you know, um, and like the way texture can, yeah. I think it's like physical materiality into the digital materiality in a way. Yeah, and then bring it back as well. Yeah, that brings it like, I mean, that brings me, another thing I was thinking of looking at a quote, I think you said, um, somewhere in my notes, images are made softer, Printed on the fabric, made tougher, pasted onto walls. And I think that's really fascinating. So you're always trying to play with it within that screen when you're building it, and then in a such a special in the physical space. But then, like I say, it's nice to then in and back again. I guess it's always this interplay of things. But you're saying this is the first show that's had that, I guess, hardness being more 
kind of made him put out the stuff and just was on his mind. Yeah, like this is probably the closest going back to the West Bank's work yeah. that I did with the big like floating walls. Mm. Um, yeah, but I definitely feel like it's yeah, nice to, to have those chains. I mean, even in art history, you know, if you look at sculptures and it's marble and it's like this, it looks soft and flowing like yeah. it can move, but it's so stuck. Yeah. And um, I think images are like that too. Yeah. yeah. They can look like something and be something else. Mm, they're deceiving. Again, like, yeah. Yeah. Okay, like truth, what's real, it's always the same for the material or the narrative. Great, yes. mm. right, do we have any other questions? We might take a, a final one or two more questions if anyone's got any. Wait a second more, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> All right, fantastic. Well, we might just finish it there. So thank you so much, Grace. Thank you so much, Jack. And uh, the exhibition runs until the end of this week. So the show is open uh, both Friday and Saturday. So if you have an opportunity to drop by, please do. And uh, yeah, thank you for your time and have a lovely weekend. Thank you.